Hi, I'm Steve Adubato coming to you remotely. Listen, I don't know how long it's going to be, but we'll keep doing compelling public policy-oriented program when we kick off today with Barry Ostrowski, President and CEO, RWJ, Barnabas Health. Good to see you, Barry. Same here, Steve. Thanks for having me. The co-authoring this book, Changing Missions, Changing Lives, How a Change Agent Can Turn One Ship and Create Impact. What's it about and why does it matter so much? You are the co-author of it. Look, Steve, I, I think it's about our journey here at RWJ Barnabas Health. About four years ago, we decided that great clinical health care is a terrific thing, but it's not enough to make our communities healthy. And so we invested in an entire platform of social impact programming, and that changed the mission of the organization. And so we have a very simplistic goal. Whatever we do needs to be adjudicated in the realm of have we made the community healthier? And, and the data is clear, the academic research is clear, simply having clinical programs is insufficient. That's only a 30 to 35% impact. The rest of it, for the most part, are social issues. And so we wrote this book to basically say to others, if it's your intent to help people, or if your core business is something other than healthcare, but you feel and should feel an obligation to improve the communities you serve, Here's an approach to do so. You can adopt a mission that links that which you do directly to the community, and you can build social programs that will have great impact on those who live in our communities. Frankly, we couldn't be happier having done that. It will take a long time for some of these programs to show the kinds of results we all aspire to see, but nonetheless, it's galvanized our employees, it's motivated all of us to do more to help our communities. And needless to say, we're talking to each other in the midst of the second surge of COVID and our communities are suffering now more than ever. So we're delighted with the new mission, which is now four and a half years old, but we encourage others to consider the same. So by the way, uh, I disclose a couple of things. Michelle Davis, the co-author of that book, a board member of ours, RWG Barnabas Health, a longtime supporter of public broadcasting including uh, what we're doing. Also, Barry, you are on the board of NJTV, are you not? I am, yes. Yes, you admit that. I do. And you... <laughs> and, and I don't have talk... my own show. I don't have yeah. my own show, but I'm on the board. Well, we're working on it. So, <laughs> but, but Barry, here's the other part of this. What I often think about is with healthcare organizations, yours and other large systems and other smaller systems under hospitals are struggling financially in the age of COVID, big time. Right? How do you how do you meet the bottom line needs of a massive healthcare organization like RWJ Barnabas Health, but still keep this commitment to an anti-racism initiative, fighting against the social determinants of health, having social impact? How do they balance out? That is a great question, Steve, and it is the challenge. And and it would be disingenuous for me to suggest that it's an easy thing to do. We're fortunate. We've had multiple years of outstanding margin growth. We've accumulated resources. And so the choice is, how do you allocate the resources you have acquired versus how much money you may be earning at that given time? And it's been our decision that we would use that which we've been able to accumulate over time and make sure that we allocated to these social programs and, of course, our anti-racism journey that we began not long ago. Now, no one pays for that, and so we need to pay for it ourselves. And in our case, when we look at next year and we see there'll be hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue that we will not collect, we made an overt decision that unlike the usual industrial re response by organizations like ours to reduce the workforce, we're laying no one off. And that is going to, in fact, reduce our ability to create any margin. It'll reduce our ability to uh, take in maximum revenue. But still, it is our commitment that if we were to lay people off and reduce workforce just to balance the books, we'd be creating more hurt to our communities. So in our case, we're, in, we're effectively using that which we have accumulated over time. Now, you can find efficiency, and you can, in fact, go by for a year or two living at more or less a break-even or even a bit of a loss, 
But in my view, if you retrench from the mission, if you step back from improving the communities, you've lost it. And so you have to continue. You know, it's interesting. The other thing is I've done a fair amount of leadership and communication uh, coaching at RWJ Barnabas Health. And one of the areas with clinical professionals is around, frankly, persuading people. What I mean by that is I'm talking about the vaccine. Now, we're taping on the 8th of December. This will be seen largely in 2021, first quarter, heavily. Persuading people, convincing people that, particularly in communities of color, that this vaccine is safe. Now, I don't know all the details about what the FDA has done or hasn't done, and that's our job in the media to do that. But here's my question. How important is it that you and the clinicians at RWJ Barnabas Health lead a public awareness initiative around this vaccine? Having it is one thing. Administering it to those who need it is another. Go ahead. You're absolutely right, Steve. And I spent last week a couple of days working on programs that will attempt to persuade everyone in our communities to, in fact, be vaccinated. Look, there's no question about the fact that people are skeptical of a variety of things having to do with the vaccine, how it was developed, how quickly it was developed. You know, you know there's, there's almost an idea that this is too good news to really accept. And, and so people are rejecting it to a certain extent. Candidly, my worry is the vulnerable communities. There, the skepticism is not only about the development of the vaccine, but uh, decades, if not centuries, of healthcare dismissing the needs of black people and others who live in vulnerable communities. So right, hold it, it there, Barry. If you want to check out what Barry's saying, check out two words, the Tuskegee experiment, and that will explain a lot. Pick up from there, Barry. That's exactly right. And so, and so in addition to talking about the legitimacy of the vaccine, we have to break down, and it exists, unfortunately, rightfully, break down this concern that the healthcare system is pushing something onto a vulnerable community that's not yet ready to be absorbed. Um, we, it's and a must, we must convince people to do that. Now, there's a whole other aspect that you and I have talked about for years, and you've helped lead our people to understand. We have to learn how to deal and talk to the consumer better. You know, for years, it's been a very arrogant relationship. We're in healthcare, you're sick, we take care of you. We've never really been sufficiently transparent. We've never been engaging in the kind of discussions and dialogue that places the patient on equal footing. And as a result, the patient has never taken responsibility generally for him or herself. That's our fault, not the consumer's fault. And so here's a perfect example where we have to ensure that the consumer not only trusts us, but understands that what we're advocating is for the benefit of the consumer. And that's something, frankly, we're not terribly good at. And by the way, as we leave this segment with Barry, check out an interview I did with uh, the great Alan Alda. Um, Alan Alda, uh, he teaches and coaches scientists to communicate in non-scientific terms, clinicians as well. And a lot of the area of my research and my work outside of broadcasting is communicating to non-clinical, non-technical, non-legal. Barry's a lawyer by training. I'm not going to go into the detail, but that's what Barry's referring to. That being said, we have a job to do, those of us in the media and the healthcare world, to keep educating and informing those about the vaccine and responding to those questions legitimately, legitimate questions. Barry Ostrowski, President and CEO, RWJ Barnabas Health. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks so much. We'll be back right after this. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, PSCNG, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, New Jersey Sharing Network, Rutgers University, Newark, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, MD Advantage Insurance Company, and by Johnson & Johnson. Promotional support provided by AM970, The Answer. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Choosing a new family doctor can be confusing. Check with your health insurer to see which physicians near you participate with your plan. Find out which hospitals the doctor uses and who covers when the doctor is away. And remember to schedule an appointment with your new doctor in advance to fill out any paperwork without the added stress of being sick.